Hello, hello, Old Donation family and friends. It is Easter 3, the third Sunday of the season of Easter, and we are back with you to offer praise and thanksgiving together. So uh, get ready to sing your hymns and say your prayers. So here we are. Christ is risen, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, right? Okay, uh, we are going to start out with the acclamation, and we'll do it right this time. <laughs> alleluia, Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. And now we'll sing our, our opening hymn, When Morning Gilds the Skies. to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouth shall proclaim your praise. praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to, to the Son, and, and to the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We'll have our first reading from the book of Acts. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you've handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and the righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. with you now <laughs> surprise and ready to sing our sequence hymn the lord is my light Salvation, whom shall I? 
A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 through 48. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The Word of the Lord. So, um, I know that most of you, or many of you, know my children, or of my children. I talk about them a lot. But I don't think that I have ever told you about our first child. He came to us in 2009, just this tiny black and white ball of fur. Yes, he was our fur baby, and his name was Baloo, and we loved him. He was uh, Ben, my husband's, and my um, pride and joy and everything to us, and then as our family grew, uh, he remained a part of our family and our lives, and we lost him a year and a half ago and have since gotten two more beautiful little puppies who we've had for a year now, but still will remember Baloo and talk about him and miss him. And um, the other night, just uh, maybe on Tuesday night this week, the night before I was going to actually write my sermon for you, not just think about it, but write it, I had this really weird dream. And so in my dream, Ben and I were in our house, um, hanging out, doing, playing a game or doing something. And Ben looks up into the corner of the, of the room and said, what is that? And I looked and I was like, oh, it's just a little bit of fluff. I don't know if your house looks anything like my house does, but often those little bits of fluff can gather in corners of rooms uh, and go unnoticed for some time. 
Um, this was maybe larger than normal, but, but it was kind of like this fluffy thing up there. And so I said, ah, don't worry about it. And we kept going on, and he just kept looking at it. And he said, no, really, what is that? And so he took a chair and stood on the chair, and we both went over, and we looked. And the closer we looked, the, the bigger and more, like, real the fluff got and it started to take some shape and so Ben reached up um, and started to touch it and it got even more shape and texture and more solid and I was touching it too and realized this is Baloo and this this ball of this little ball of fluff turned into our dog but but still not completely our dog. And it was, it was so strange and we're holding this thing and we, we put him down and he goes and runs over to the food bowl where our other two live dogs are eating dinner and starts eating and becomes a full dog. Like he's, he's our dog here again. So I woke up from this dream and thought, well, that was kind of strange. You should probably tell Ben about that. That was a, you know, I haven't dreamt about Baloo for a while. Um, and then I forgot about it and went about my day. And then um, on my drive home from visiting someone in the hospital, I said, okay, well, now it's time to write my sermon. So I'm thinking about the scripture and this dream pops into my head again. And I realized I dreamt the resurrection story. <laughs> That is exactly what happened to the disciples in the locked room, only it wasn't a dream for them. They're sitting there, and Jesus appears, and they can't really believe it. And he says, see me, see my hands and my feet, look at them. And then he says, touch them, feel them. And then when that still isn't quite enough, he says, okay, feed me give me something to eat. And he eats in front of them. And then they believe and they see him and they know Christ is here. So in our gospel reading, how I have always read it, how, how many interpret it, is that this process that Jesus goes through is to prove his resurrection, to show the disciples once and for all that everything that he has talked about that he has told them is going to happen, has happened, and he is here and real among them. I wonder if maybe in addition to seeing it as proof of the resurrection, we also look at it as another continuation or a fulfillment of what Jesus has been doing his entire life. His whole ministry has been about this. What did Jesus do? He saw. He didn't just look by people or wave across the street or maybe say, hey, how's it going on his walk by. He saw people. And then when he saw them, he touched them. He healed them. He spoke with them, interacted with them, got to know them spent that time. And what's the other thing he did? Feed. He fed people, thousands of people, literally, uh, with, with fish and bread, but also he nourished their souls. Jesus fed constantly. And in that feeding came the realization of who he was, of who God was and is. So when we ask ourselves today, you know that age old question, how do we bring the kingdom of God into our world? How do we bring about it? Because we could sure use some kingdom of God around here right now. I think this is exactly how. <laughs> it's these three simple verbs that we can do. We can see the nouns, those people and places and things who are maybe on the margins or floating around in our periphery. 
Have you ever been truly seen by someone? Not just those, hi, how are you, good, how are you, but, but really seen. It's powerful to be seen. It makes you feel real. And then, once we've seen, then we touch. Now, I've given this warning, and I know we are in virtual space right now, but I have warned at the 8 o'clock and the 10 o'clock too, Mother Ashley is not telling people to go out and start giving hugs again and say, she says that we should touch each other, and so now it's safe to do it. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, touch, we have come to see in this past year, can be experienced even when we can't be physically with one another. Find ways to, to spread the feeling of touch, of community, of care. Do those things that Christ did. And then feed, nourish. Maybe find ways to actually give food to people or just find what they need. Find what it is you most need and give it. In these ways, we bring about that resurrection. We see and things become more real and we touch and even more real and we feed and then Christ is present and with us and the resurrection is there. So, I guess what I'm saying is um, don't wait until spring cleaning to attend to those furry things in the corners of your rooms. Start now. Take care of those things that, that are so easy to ignore or to miss or let slide by. Not only will your house be cleaner, but maybe you can bring about the kingdom of God. Amen. prayers. Um, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be, be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy for we put our trust in you. And you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, the King eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness through the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. And we invite your intercessions and thanksgivings at this time silently, aloud, or typing them into Facebook where the community can join with you. 
And this morning, for our prayers, we ask your intercession for the family of Holly Brooks, a neighbor of Diane, Diane Shaver, who died last night. Uh, we ask God's blessing on Holly and his life from here on in, and for his family, the consolation of the Holy Spirit. For Betty Wills, who uh, had a heart problem last night, and John had to bring her to the emergency room. For Harry, for Richard Hudson, for Nancy Guineri, who is in Beach General with a hiatal hernia, and we pray for her healing and return home. Aubrey Swinson, Joe Gallup, Margaret and Jesse Britton, Kevin Campbell, Genevieve Nelson, who remains in Lee Hospital, but uh, we uh, here is making some progress, and we pray for a, a full and quick recovery and return home. Kurt, Yvette Gormley, Pat Benton, Sid Gil Kilgore, Patricia Cook, Shannon Briotti, Dean Rogers, Emily McInnes, Kim, Sarah Hill, Ruth Rudolph, Rick and Robert Williamson, Mike Donovan, Cindy Bixby, Carvel Taylor, Jessica Williamson, Stan Hopkins, Hope Matthews, Brian and Heather Hang Hunt and their child to come, Meredith Guzman, Julius Ventura, Howard Hanchi, Amy, Pam Campbell, Ruth Ann, Donna, Frank, Kelly, Gabe, and Gio, Alan and Carol Ormond. For God's vision of a beloved community to become our vision for this nation and world, especially for an end of violence in our nation, especially for gun violence that seems to be in an epidemic state right now. We pray for peace in this whole world, for deployed personnel everywhere, for all in medical and emergency and police forces. We pray for scientists working on solutions for COVID-19 and for the distribution of vaccines. And we have some birthdays, I think. We do. We wish a very happy birthday to Laura Alt and a happy anniversary to Joanne and Sid Kilgore. We pray right. that uh, your day be full of light and blessing and that you get some time in this beautiful outdoors today to enjoy God's creation and that your year to come will also be filled. And I, and I want to say uh, I learned after the service this morning that there was another a very important birthday. Eleanor McClellan turned 13 this week, and wow. she was the only McClellan we did not have her birth date in our <laughs> register, probably because all of them had their birthday births when they were previously members and then moved away and Eleanor was the only one we didn't record. So, uh, so happy 13th birthday to Eleanor yes. and, uh, and especially our prayers and condolences for Robette who now has three teenagers. teenagers. <laughs> so. And we also want to bring to your attention the vaccine yes. clinic that's going on today and I'll let you... Um, yes. Vaccinations. If you haven't had your COVID vaccinations, this is the perfect time. And I really pray and hope for all of you to go get your vaccinations. Anyone 16 or over can get them today at the Old Macy's in the Military Circle Mall on Military Highway. It's, uh, if you can't figure it out, just drive around and you'll see all the cars and go in that entrance. Um, but Arun Iyer, who's running the clinic and is a member here, tells me that there will be no waiting today. Uh, they're expecting very short lines or no lines, and you can walk right in, get your vaccination. Tell your neighbors and friends and your relatives and let them know, because uh, as Fred pointed out this morning, there are lots of people who don't know how to get their vaccine easily. Military Highway, Military Mall, the Old Macy's, today until 7 o'clock. Yes. No waiting, just walk in. So All right. that's important. It important is very news. important. And, and a big Thanksgiving, too, for Arun for keeping us updated and letting us know when right. these opportunities come up. Yes. So other than that, uh, the only other announcement I want to make is that next Sunday is Easter 4, which is Good Shepherd Sunday, and we will, um, God willing, have a lamb here, a live lamb for Good Shepherd Sunday. So there will be a special children's sermon 
on Sunday. Uh, while Fred's talking to the big people, uh, Ashley and I will take the, the little kids off and we'll uh, talk about uh, good shepherds. So, uh, so don't miss it. Uh, live in person with a live lamb at 10 o'clock outdoors, okay? And, uh, and if it's raining, we'll be indoors with still a live lamb. So come and join us, okay? Um, we'll continue with the act of spiritual communion. So let us pray together. My Jesus, My Jesus I, believe I believe that you are, you are truly present, present in the, the blessed sacrament of the bread and wine of our table. table. I love, I love your presence and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, trusting in your promise to be with us in our prayers. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. And now we'll sing our closing hymn, The God of Abraham Praise. into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Make no peace with oppression. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 See you next week. Mm -hmm.